So you may have been told that Aperture is king in planetary imaging. Well this is very true, but of course you can still get a great image with an 8 inch scope of a planet like Jupiter or Saturn. Here in my backyard with me, I have a Celestron C8 telescope. It's actually a pretty good telescope. So it can't get super high resolution photos, but why does that resolution really matter if you can still capture all the details? Yes, of course you can blow it up and zoom it in more, but still, if you wanna capture details, that's what we're talking about in this video, we're talking about details. If you wanna get those details, well, of course you can still capture them with the, like a C8. I used to actually own a C5, a 127 SLT, which is uh, still five inch, so I consider it a C5, but um, the five inch was actually a really good scope. I got some pretty dang good details of Jupiter with that scope too, but of course the eight inch is gonna yield much better results, which will show those photos in a minute. Now, most people say that for planetary imaging, an eight inch scope is the bare minimum to capture all the planets. And this is true because if you wanna capture like Uranus and Neptune, which obviously Neptune isn't capturable through eight inch, but Uranus is, but if you wanna capture that, like with an eight inch scope, that's more possible, but not with a five inch. My 127 SLT by Celestron could not capture Neptune at all, or even Uranus really. It couldn't capture any of those. Um, Saturn and Jupiter did really well on even Mars. I got some decent ones of Mars with that one, but um, honestly, this eight inch has done a lot better, though I'm saying you could still get a lot more potential out of your scope until it's time really time to upgrade. If, you're, if your images are like blurry and maybe like, you know, not very sharp or whatever, that has nothing to do with the aperture of your scope. It has to do with either collimation, focus, or any of the above. It can't be to do with your scope unless of course you're blowing it up really big and it's only like 200 by 200 or something. Then that would make a problem with, you know, kind of like blurring. But if you're just, you know, keeping it its optimal size, like in terms of zoom, like on Photoshop or whatever you're taking it into, and you keep it like shrunk down when you're viewing it, if it still looks sharp, you're good to go. I mean, that that's really what it is. But what I'm trying to say is you can still get a lot more details than you think you can. Because also seeing impacts a lot more things than you think it does. Seeing is one of the biggest problems we have with planetary imaging. It affects it, I think, more than deep sky, honestly. Because every time I do deep sky, it doesn't affect it too much. It just depends on like the, depends on the, um, the object you're photographing and how far zoomed in you are, obviously. but. On this, on this telescope, my C8, actually, um, when I photograph the planets, it seeing impacts it really bad. So if you're like, you know, of course, zoomed in quite a bit, and when you're using a Barlow even, um, it gets even worse because it gets less light gathering ability. So then you're getting more of the bad seeing when you have to crank exposure and everything. So what I do is I'd wait for a night that looks really good, like to where it's not shaking and wobbling into all different shapes and everything. And to where you can see the details really sharply through live view and you can see almost all of them. Of course, they're not always over, but you can still see them with your eye and they're sharp. Um, I'd wait to one of those nights and then, then I would go ahead and try to capture it and see what you come up with. So here's a good example. This is kind of like bad seeing with Jupiter. This is like okay average-ish seeing. is like eh, not very good. This was with great seeing, I think. This is pretty good seeing with Jupiter. I don't know, I haven't gotten much better seeing than this recently. Because of course I live in Ohio and seeing kind of sucks here. Yeah, kind of sucks. If you have bad collimation, well, let me tell you, I had a horrible image the other night with my um, telescope. When I was trying to get the photo to look good, um, actually, the scene was great. Okay, I'll tell you this. The scene was great, but my collimation was poor, I could tell, because when I was focusing the scope, it was focusing from a weird angle. So, like, Jupiter would be right here. When it was out of focus, it would kind of do this. And it was, like, you're not supposed to really focus like that. It's supposed to focus like this, obviously. So, that's what you really want it to do. So I could tell collimation was off, so what I did was I recollimated and oh my gosh, it changed everything. The photo was so much sharper, you could see everything. So that could be a cause of definitely being a blurry photo. Here's another big thing, focus. If you're not in good focus, just by even a tiny bit, it's gonna screw up your whole image, unlike deep sky, which you can be a little bit made out of focus maybe, but I mean, it's still not good to be out of focus regardless, but planetary imaging, it's a lot more noticeable, so to speak. Anyways though, an eight inch scope does have a lot of potential. My Celestron C8 has gotten some amazing images out of it. Now let's dive a little deeper here. If you have a bar lens attached to your telescope, make sure that the bar lens is not overpowering the telescope. If it is overpowering the telescope, that is a big bad reason as to why your telescope or Jupiter photos don't look very good. Uh, who wants to take telescope photos? If the bar lens is overpowering your telescope, this can really cause your image to be dimmer, which means you have to crank up the exposure and gain which means also you're gonna have to get more blurry, smeary shots with higher exposures, and you're also gonna have to get more noise, which overall really leads to like a very, you know, smudgy looking blob. So you don't really wanna do that. Even, even if you stack a lot of frames, it's not really gonna help much once it's too much blown up. You'd have to really shrink it down to the original size it was, like without the Barlow, 
in post-processing. Another thing to make sure of is that you're taking enough frames. If you're not taking enough frames, well, you're not gonna get those amazing details and everything on Jupiter, especially because you're not capturing the best moments possible. Because if you don't capture the best moments possible, you're gonna end up with the blurrier ones and the smeared or whatever, the bad seeing ones, which is gonna result in, you know, a blurrier, halio, halio, what did I just say? Halio or image that's gonna end up very, you know, blurry and just messy. So that, that's why I would take a ton of frames, like 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, even 120,000 if you're not doing monochrome, you're just doing RGB. But you don't wanna stack all the frames together because you'll get like a smeared Jupiter. And this could be another reason why you're only seeing the bands, but you're not really seeing any details on Jupiter is because you're mainly stacking too many frames or you're stacking too over too many spans of time. You know, like maybe, and I'm talking like minutes make a big difference for Jupiter. Jupiter rotates very quickly. So if you get, you know, maybe like 10,000 frames, you might wanna take some of those frames, like cut 2,000 out per each of them, and then you'd wanna combine them in like something like when Jupos, you know, after you stack individual sets and whatever, that way you get a derotated image so you don't have to keep on uh, getting blurry results, if you know what I mean. Tip number one is the image on a night of good seeing. Seeing can really help in terms of like details and how much resolution you can get out of the final image. So the better scene you have, the more you'll be able to zoom in because more light is available. Um, that's actually good light. So you can actually zoom in more and on top of that, get more good details that won't be visible in a poor scene condition. Tip number two, get your collimation to as close as perfect as possible. Collimation is very crucial in planetary imaging, especially because we use SCTs, Schmidt Cassegrain Green Telescopes. Um, so definitely make sure your collimation is top notch. Um, without good collimation, you'll still, even regardless if you have good scene or not, you'll get blurry images, all sorts of stuff you don't want to deal with. Um, a lot of Edrin artifact especially comes with bad collimation, so do not have bad collimation unless you want Edrin artifact and you want to cancel it out in processing. Tip number three is focus. Make sure to spend a lot of time focusing your planets. Um, if you don't focus the planet correctly, even if it's just a hair off, it's going to look terrible. You're going to see blurring and everything. Tip number four, get a Crayford focuser. A Crayford focuser can really help tune the fine focus of your image. So make sure if you have a Crayford focuser that you spend a lot of time focusing still, but it will really, really help in terms of like focusing and making sure your focus is um, really accurate. Tip number five is to use a dedicated astronomy camera, like one like the ZWO 678MC. Um, that one is really good because a dedicated astronomy camera like that can actually crop in really small on the planets and also you can use it with a computer and crop it in ROI. And that is my next tip for tip number six is to crop it in ROI. ROI means region of interest and ROI is basically when you crop in really small into the planet Jupiter or whatever planet you're photographing and you're basically cropping in so that way you get more frames per second and also it's less harsh on processing. Tip number seven is to take advantage of lucky imaging. This basically means you're taking the best frames out of your um, video that you recorded to the planet and you're stacking the like 20%, 30%, 15% together um, and making a final result and then sharpening it. Tip number eight is use a program like WinJupos. This will derotate the planet, especially for Jupiter and Mars. Um, this basically means you're taking lots of data um, and then you'll take it over time and then derotate the planet. It also gives a nice, sharper, smoother result on uh, to all the edges of the planet. Tip number nine is to spend a lot of time outside photographing. The more you take of the planets, the more lucky imaging you'll have, meaning the more frames you have to select from and better quality ones likely. And also, if you take more frames, you'll be able to get a less noisy result and a sharper result, hopefully, with the better frames you took. Tip number 10 is to get an IR filter. Now, an IR filter isn't that really that expensive, so it wouldn't be too much. Um, an IR filter can really help with bad seeing, like if you can't have very good nights of seeing, um, an IR filter can really help with getting the better wavelengths of light where the seeing is actually good, um, even if the seeing is really bad out that night. Tip number 11 is to use fire capture for planetary imaging. The main reason why I say this is because they have a cool, really cool feature that is called auto align and the auto align basically allows you to center the planet in frames so you don't have to put it through something like PIP but um, after you get an imaging because it makes it really easy. Tip number 12 is to get a large aperture telescope. You can get something like the C11, C8. Um, a C8 is a great starting point, but a C11 is tend to be the sweet spot because a C11 is still portable while you can still get great images of the planets. Well, I don't have a C11 right now, um, but I have a C8 and it's still got me this amazing image of Jupiter. So technically a large aperture can really help with the planetary details and more resolution. Tip number 13 is do not overpower your combination of telescope and camera. Meaning like don't put a Barlow lens on there and over zoom it 
unless the scene's really good because it'll just make it all blurry and you also won't get an amazing image and you'll still have to really uh, make it really small. Um, and it won't look as good as even if you didn't use a Barlow. And it's gonna look worse actually than it would with the uh, undersampling. Tip number 14 is to use lower exposure and higher gain. Now, the reason why you wanna use lower exposure, I found out now, is because lower exposure will really help you up that FPS. And also, if you use too high of an exposure, even if you get high FPS, it can actually really smear out your images because the higher exposure you have, the less quality frames you're gonna get because you're gonna get some of the bad scene frames mixed with the good scene frames in one frame, if that makes sense. And it's not gonna look the best. Tip number 15 is to use a program like Registax to process your images. Registax is a great program because it allows you to sharpen things just right. And um, it allows you to kind of get the extra details that you might not get in something like Photoshop or Pixinsight just doing a simple sharpening unsharp mask. But tip number 16 is actually use Auto Stacker for stacking because Auto Stacker actually has a lot more options individually for stacking. Whereas Registax, I found it have some more artifacts and problems when I go to stack. Tip number 17 is use a monochrome camera. A monochrome camera can really help in terms of extra resolution and detail if you don't have a huge telescope. So that's why I recommend using a monochrome camera if you don't have a huge telescope and can have, help you get greater details and more details with just because it has a higher resolution. Tip number 18 is to use an app like Astrospheric. Astrospheric can really help in terms of seeing. It can tell you what exactly seeing is in your current location and time. Um, it'll really help with like seeing and stuff and before you actually go outside and try to predict the scene yourself. Tip number 19, if you need help finding the planets, use something like Stellarium. Stellarium can really help, oh my gosh, it's raining. Stellarium can really help with that um, finding the planet issue because Stellarium will show you exactly the position in the night sky edition. You can kind of um, scroll around with your phone. It's actually one of the top apps I use for astrophotography. Tip number 20, it is getting really rainy out here. Make sure to use something like Photoshop after the fact that after you've you know, processed it in Registax, it'll really help make sure your images look great. We're gonna be photographing planet Venus from my backyard, but only this time with cloud structures. Let's get started, I'm so excited. First, we gotta find the planet Venus. I am using this uh, little six by 30 finder scope with, mounted with the Celestron C8 and a ZWO ASI 178mm as the camera and then a ZWO EWF filter wheel. I am also using a Skywatcher EQM35 Pro mount for the uh, mount, the tracking system basically. So I'm also using a Jackery battery, which is for the uh, uh, mount power, so I use it to power the mount because I don't have any other way of powering the mount really. You guys can see here's planet Venus right here and it looks a slight bit out of collimation. So what I like to do is I like to actually collimate. I think that looks pretty good right there, so I am going to go ahead and use that. So now I'm going to go ahead and fully focus the telescope. So let's go ahead and fully focus. It's pretty good. I mean, it's a little off, but it's slightly off. And I am not going to be using a bar lens, unfortunately, today, because if I use a bar lens, it is going to screw everything up, because before when I used a Barlow, it was just too much on the telescope, even though it's really bright. So I'm gonna go ahead and crop this in. Still pretty big for not using a Barlow, which is pretty good. And there it is, there's Venus. It looks very bad seeing today, so I'm definitely, definitely not gonna use a Barlow. And I have to initialize the telescope interface, which I did not do that yet. You see the seeing ain't the best tonight, but it is going very quickly, so hopefully we'll get a decent image of it. Now I'm probably only gonna go to 20,000 frames with IR, just because I want to also get UV. And UV is the most important channel in terms of getting uh, cloud structures on planet Venus. Currently Venus is being covered over a little bit of cloud cover. Um, so yeah. All right, we reached 20,000 so we can go ahead and stop IR. Turn up gain. As I said in my other video, you definitely want to keep gain uh, lower and exposure higher in this one because I feel like it does a better job. Every time I do high gain with low exposures, it always tends to be really noisy. 